today I'm going to be teaching on, I'm going to be speaking on being healed from past hurt and I'm going to open up a Q&A after, I'm just going to teach for a short time and it's going to be really a time of healing, supernatural healing for all of you who've been hurt before in the past by people um, and specifically church hurt, specifically hurts from other Christians. This is a big problem in the body of Christ, a big area where the devil has come in and has tried to put distrust in God, um, in the people of God, because of how other people have hurt them in the church. So this is really anyone in the body of Christ, leadership, pastors, but also friends, friends in the church, um, doesn't even have to be in an actual church, but just in the body of Christ. Uh, people who you thought were of God turned out not to be. People you thought were surrendered to God actually weren't who you thought they were. Turns out they had different motives and you were blindsided. And this causes a lot of hurt. This is an area where bondage can come in. This is an area where the devil can just bring... Um, this scar that doesn't heal without the power of God um, and keeping you from being childlike and trusting towards God and trusting towards the God's system, God's church, his true anointed vessels. So this is what you're going to be receiving healing from today. This message came at a perfect time. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Yes. It, um, you know, me as, as an apostle, as a vessel of God, I am a servant of God. I'm a servant for his people, for all of you. I'm, I'm here to serve. That's, that's who I, that's my whole job calling mission is to serve, is to be a servant. It's not to preach, you know, something that I want to preach, but it's to be able to serve you, to be able to serve God's people with what they need. And God has been really speaking to me lately, specifically this week. God has opened up my eyes to how a lot of people are hurting in the church. There are wounds that have not been healed yet from past church hurt. And so this is why so many of you, I'm not too surprised. To, I'm not surprised to see so many of you saying you need this because this is what God has really been speaking to me. That it, this is what he wants to do right now is to heal you all from this. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so excited for this healing that he is bringing, this deliverance he's bringing today. So, um, first of all, first of all, you know, ever since this new year, I've been speaking prophetically. I've been speaking prophetically on how the harvest is ripe and how this will be the year the promise will be fulfilled. And in terms of this revival, this end time revival, God's revival that doesn't belong to any person or church or any group, but it's God's revival that doesn't come from men, that isn't made up or conjured up or um, constricted by men and women, but it's God's revival. This revival we're going to see reach the world in such greater levels, such greater dimensions. God will open up doors and defeat the devil's schemes to try to stifle or delay or push back the revival this year. It's a year of victory. And we just haven't seen hardly anything yet compared to what God is going to do in his revival. Hallelujah. So, you know, prophetically, I've been speaking. I've been speaking about what this revival is going to look like. And one of the characteristics of this revival is that God is purifying his bride in this revival. It's the end time revival. It's not like the all the other revivals we hear of. It's like a certain city's name. And it's like the revival was just there for a certain amount of time in that city, you know, and it was just then history. But this revival is for the whole body of Christ where it's it's not just like a a certain people, a certain group of people in one city or something um, 
have this fire and are really excited about God, you know? But it's really this transformation of the whole body of Christ, this purification of the whole body of Christ. Because in Ephesians 5, 27, it says, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish. So we, before Jesus returns, we have to be a radiant church without stain without or wrinkle or any other blame, blemish, but holy and blameless. So this church will be pure. Our, the body of Christ will be pure. It will be pure. It'll be purified. There's a lot of work that has to be done, but this is what God is doing now. He's purifying the bride. So because the bride needs to be purified so much, there's a great work to be done. We haven't got there yet. We've just scratched the surface and purifying the whole bride. Because of that, there are impurities. There are, obviously, there are impurities there, uh, which, which looks like, it's looking like in people because the church is the people, the, the bride is the people, the people of God, the Christians, that's what the bride is and that's what's being purified. So right now, there are impurities, there are people who are not pure in the body of Christ, there are leaders who are not pure in the body of Christ. Um, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 says this, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. I'm gonna read that again. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. So that can mean, it's not just saying like denying that there's power of God that exists, but it's having a form of godliness, but, but denying the power of God to transform oneself. Wanting, to, you know, believing that God's real, going to church, maybe even in a place of leadership, leading a church and preaching, you know, having that form of godliness, but denying the power of God to transform oneself because they don't want to let go of these things that are just mentioned in the previous verse in the previous in that what i was just speaking on in this verse um have nothing to do with such people they are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires always learning but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. So always learning, you know, um, even seeming like they have so much revelation, even maybe even able to preach really well with such amazing sounding revelation, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth, never coming into that place of purity and the truth of who God is and who God wants one to be. Just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds who as far as the faith is concerned are rejected, but they will not get very far because as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. So, I'm, I'm kind of sharing right now the root of wh where this hurt that some of you have experienced has come from. Why you've experienced this hurt, many in most cases, is because of this scripture I've read here in 2 Timothy 3, that there are people who claim to be Christians but 
have not really surrendered or are not willing to allow God to transform their hearts, not willing to give up these evil p p desires and impure parts of their hearts. But many times they hide these things, right? They hide these things. And this is where so much hurt has come from because it doesn't look obvious on the outside. And some of you might have been deceived, some of you might have been fooled, some of you might have just been blindsided that someone wasn't who you thought they were. Um, so this is, this is the reality of some people in the church today, just people in the body of Christ, some leaders. This is what we're looking at here. And this is what God is purifying now. Now, um, the devil hates more than anything for the church to be pure. Because, I mean, this is what makes the anointing come. When God entrusts anointing to a vessel when he finds the heart pure. Because this is something, this is his power he's entrusting to someone to have real power and you have, I mean, we have free will. So that's why God doesn't just give anointing easily. We have free will. He's given us authority on this earth. He's given us authority, like he's literally given us authority to use that anointing, to release that anointing. So like he's not um, a puppet master. We are not robots. So before he can pour powerful anointing in someone, when it's really him pouring this pure anointing, he has to see that he can trust you. And what he's looking at specifically is that purity of heart, that you aren't hiding things. You can't hide these things from God. You can't hide your heart from God. He's looking at the heart to see that it's really pure so that when he pours that anointing in a person, he can know this person will do exactly what I want them to do. He will, they will do my will just as he said, about David, I found a man after my own heart, and it goes on to say, he will do my will. That's what God is looking at. I'm looking to use people who will actually do my will and not have their will at all in them, but 100% God's will. And so where we find these impurities in the body of Christ is when people have, have selfish ambition. They have different motives. They can say, yes, I'm surrendered to God and I want his will. But deep down, that's not the truth. Deep down, they're in it for different reasons. They're in even, could be ministry even for different reasons, different motives. So when someone is, is in the church, is in leadership for the wrong reasons, with bad motives, um, it can be hidden for a while, but it will eventually come out. And many times it comes out through, through the hurt. You can't fake being like Jesus. You're either transformed into his image, your heart's looking like him or not. You can't fake it. So um, this is where you have, uh, I know so many have gone through it. I've gone through it in my past. I've gone through it before, especially when you have a childlike heart. God calls us to have childlike hearts, but with that childlike heart, we must have wisdom too. And the wisdom doesn't come immediately. The wisdom comes as we grow, as it's like we are students. And how the things are with God is, is that we don't have, we have the word of God, but we don't have everything spelled out for us you know, before we step into the world of being a child of God. You know, we don't learn everything on day one. And God teaches us things through experiences. God teaches us things. Uh, he opens up our eyes as we go through things, as we see things, we learn. And God is healing people today of a, a grudge that they've had towards God, like bitterness because some of you have been hurt by people, by people in the church, and you felt, you feel 
like angry at God that he, you know, didn't warn you before or keep you from being hurt. Um, some of you, it's been a long time that you, your eyes were closed. You didn't know what was going on. But God, God is healing you from this right now. I want to share with you right now that nothing is ever God's fault. Nothing is ever God's fault. Um, his way of teaching us sometimes is for our eyes to be opened through these circumstances. And once our eyes are opened, we have learned, we have seen, and we will not make the same mistake again. We will know what red flags to look out for. And we will stay safe as we stay surrendered to God and stay in obedience to Him. So I just wanted to share with you that in whatever you've gone through, God was always by your side. It was God Himself who opened up your eyes. In His timing, He opened up your eyes. He protected you and He brought you where you are now, safe and secure and in His will. Amen. Amen. I know many of you might have been hurt by uh, even romantic relationships from people who claim to be Christian, you thought were surrendered to God, but you found out, I mean, abuse might have happened in those relationships. Emotional abuse, manipulation is a big thing. It's a big thing. I want to mention right now also that just so you can understand the devil's schemes, the devil, um, he is terrified of you being a humble, childlike, teachable, pure vessel of God. And so he sees your heart. I know if you're watching this, you have a pure heart and he sees your pure heart and he's terrified of that because that is the heart that God can entrust with anointing. This, this, heart, this heart you have is, is what will change the world, is what will destroy the kingdom of darkness. So the devil's really terrified and that's why you've gone, many of you have gone through the things you've gone through because there's been a specific and strategic attack like, like him just wanting to stop you in your tracks, him wanting to take the childlikeness from you away and him wanting you to even stay away from the church. This is a, this is a strategy of the devil because God right now is restoring the fivefold ministry to the body of Christ. God is restoring his way of having church, doing church, of being vessels of God, like how we see in the Acts church. God is restoring that. And the devil has worked really hard to really get, pull Christians away from the church, pull Christians away from God's system. God has a system that there would be leadership, that there would be apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors and teachers. God has a system that there would be spiritual fathers and spiritual mothers. God has a system most of the time of releasing his power is through impartation coming from spiritual fathers, spiritual mothers, from the fivefold ministers. God, this is God's system and the devil knows that. And so this is why this is what's behind these attacks that you found, this hurt that you found, is the devil does not want you to be a part of the revival, the end time revival, and be a part of God's true church. There's some of you who are called to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but you have to be a part of the church to be that, that way. You have to trust God and trust his church, his real church, his true church, before you can get to what God has called you to do. Amen. Um, so, you know, I've, I've gone through hurt myself in the past. I've gone through um, people I've really trusted years and years ago, um, who I even looked up to spiritually. And then my eyes were open that they had these some of these qualities in them of 2 Timothy 3, 1. They have this form of godliness, but there are these different motives going on here. There are these impure motives going on here. Um, and it it's very blindsiding when you have a pure heart because you're like, what? How can you have this heart? You know, like, 
this doesn't make sense, you know, and don't you have the fear of God, right? And, you know, it's, it's, it's a shocking thing. It's an eye-opening thing. Um, but this is part of us growing up and maturing. This is part of us being innocent as doves um, and wise as snake, a serpent. Wise as a snake, as the Bible says, we're called to be innocent as doves and wise as serpents, wise as snakes. So, you know, I found in my life I had that innocent dove and then God had to put that wisdom in me. But God wants you to remain childlike and innocent, to not be just wise as a serpent and not innocent as a dove anymore. God wants you to, God needs to have you be both. This childlikeness and humility is so crucial to being entrusted with the anointing from God. It is so crucial. This is, I, you know, I've... I've had to go through being blindsided by people with wrong motives, by people I looked up to spiritually. I've had to go through that. But then my spiritual father, God led me to him. And I found such purity, the heart of God, like I've never seen before, such humility, such love, such compassion, such grace in him. And the Bible says that the pure in heart shall see God. So this pure heart that you have, it's what makes you to be able to grow in wisdom. So God may take you through things and may show you things. We're called to think the best of people. So that's why sometimes we have to go through these hard things. We think the best of people and then we're like, what? We're blindsided, right? But we aren't called to look with skepticism everywhere and, and look at and assume the worst and listen to gossip and listen to bad things that people are, say about people. We are not called to do that. You should never do that because, I mean, when people are coming with a heart of gossip, of slander, of tearing down, you should know that that's not the spirit of God to not give an ear to that at all. But we're called to look, look at, give people the benefit of the doubt um, look for the good in people and just come with that pure heart. Just come with that pure heart and let God reveal. And when you come with that pure heart and you find impurities, when you come with a pure heart, you won't judge. You will just, your eyes will just be open and you will be able to hear God's voice say, move from there, move from there, move from there quietly. Um, forgive, bless, love, and move where I am, move where my purity is. When you don't come with a pure heart, you cannot see God. You cannot, God cannot show you the truth. And um, there are some people who are deceived by, you know, impurity in people, in people in the body of Christ. Some because they just are babies in the Lord and have not grown yet, have not walked through and had their eyes opened and have not had the example to see purity and what's good and what's really God. But there are also some who are in a place deceived by um, people in the body of Christ that have these impure motives because they themselves have the impure motives too. And it'll, it, it attract, they attract each other. They attract each other because like, if you have selfish motives, if you have impure motives, if you have a motive of, um, to boost yourself up to, you know, selfish ambition, uh, to be famous, you know, or get ahead. If you have a motive of a love of money, for example, if you have those things, then you're not going to be able to to find the purity because that's not purity is not in you. So that's when you see this people like this same heart as you, and it even can make if your heart is like that, it even can make you feel better. You know, with the conviction that maybe you're hearing, and make you think, oh, this is okay, and it's like the devil wants that. And so the devil will kind of group people together with this godliness, but denying its power, having a form of godliness, but denying its power. He'll kind of like group people together like this. And I'm so, what I'm so grateful for right now is that revival is now and the remnant 
is it, it, God is bringing the remnant together and God is bringing the pure people together. I've seen in, um, in my ministry, I've seen like in 2022, I went through persecution like I've never gone through before. I went through like just slander and gossip and like so many false accusations. Like I couldn't believe like all of the, like, just detail all of these so many so many not just like one but like so many different kinds of false accusations that people would just make up um i went through all that last year so much like never before and um it was interesting because you would see like you would see like a lot of people believe the false accusations but then you would see a lot of people wouldn't believe the false accusations and it was just this eye-opening experience for me for the first time in my life to see like how what I was just sharing, how that works. Like, like let's say someone that was talking badly against me, you know, making up things, it came out of jealousy. And, you know, you could kind of see, you could kind of tell, okay, this is a jealousy thing. Um, so then you would see like-minded people, like agree with that person because it's that same spirit of jealousy. So it's like what they're feeling inside, what the devil is speaking to them inside, it's validated right um because there's not that desire to repent to be transformed and to get that to get the evil to get the impurity out there's not that desire there's not that surrender so the devil just like groups those people together but then i would see people who would so clearly be like i know exactly the truth you know this is nonsense and i would just hear so much support from people and it really blessed me because that was a, it was a, I've never gone through that before on that level. And it was really crazy, like to have people being believing, believing lies about you on such a big scale is a really weird place to be, especially because God doesn't call us to defend ourselves. And so, you know, you're in this place of uncertainty, like, will people just like, will everyone just believe the lies? Like, how will they know the truth? And da, 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 you know, you go through that. I remember just being in that place of like, this is kind of scary. Like it's creepy that people are just thinking these lies about me and there's nothing I can do. All I can do is just trust God, you know? But it was something that God showed me for the first time in my life in this scale about like what God taught me. I mean, about the pure shall see God. The Bible says the pure shall see God. And I just started seeing, you know, those people that would support me, those people that are part of Fivefold Church, our team, our serving team at Fivefold Church. I just started to see like such similar qualities in them. You know, I just in their hearts. I just thought purity. I just thought purity, 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 not having a selfish ambition, not having other motives, but just wanting to serve God just wanting to see people be free. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Just that, that's it. No other stuff going on. And, you know, you look back and you see how God works out all things for the good. You see how God uses what the devil intended for harm and uses it for your good. You see how, you know, the, the devil you know, makes these big false accusations and it even is like a filtering that God uses. A filtering that God uses right because this is part of the this is part of how he purifies his bride this is part of how he gets the impurities out this is going through the fire this is the church going through the fire on the like a big scale so even for like the devil to try to take down leaders in the church that's the church going through the fire, right? That's the whole church going through the fire. So, and it's hard, you know, the people that have pure hearts, they went through a lot of um, testing and struggles. And like for, for many of you who are watching, like you, you've been sharing about what God's been doing. You've been sharing testimonies and you've been getting, some of you have been getting so much heat and so much attack from the devil. Like you never imagined that just sharing the beautiful things that God has done would make people to like hate you and, and 
not be friends with you anymore and call you names and stuff, right? You never imagined that, right? It, that's you going through the fire and not just people, but the devil coming in different ways and trying to pull you from God's church, from his revival, from his place, from your, the place where you will be receiving anointing and walking in your purpose. And you face all these attacks of the devil trying to pull you from there. And you never faced that before in your life. And now all this attacks like crazy. That's you going, that's you going through the refining fire. And it's the church, the whole church going through the refining fire. And so those impurities have to go. Those people who want to stay impure have to go. Those people who have those impure hearts, they can't be allowed to stay. <laughs> because how else is the church going to be pure? The, the path is narrow. The lukewarm got to be spit out. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Are you going to surrender to God? Or are you going to keep your evil motives and hurt people? And God can't have that. This is the purifying that's happening. Part of this has been you just God allowing you to go through the fire. And I, and I just see God healing many people right now. Just when you were in this place of so much confusion of why God are you allowing this to happen? God's saying this was the fire. This was the refining fire. I was purifying you through this. This was a test I took you through. Some of these tests are hard. They're uncomfortable. They hurt. They're painful. But I took you through it for your good. I, I've gone through um, people who have hurt me in the past, you know, and Christians who have hurt me in the past, Christian leaders who have hurt me in the past. I've gone through that. And on the other side, it's made my heart so much bigger, bigger for God and bigger for the church. Like, I now have such a passion for people to receive the truth and for the, the people, the people in the church to really receive the pure love of God and for the people in the church to see this is who God really is because so many people have not had the proper example of who God is. So many people have looked up at, to leaders who did not represent Christ well and they put it on God. And I want people to see who God really is. I want, to, I want people to see how loving our Jesus really is is and how pure he is so i'm grateful that i've gone through what i've gone through because it's made me stronger and it's made my heart bigger for god's people and i want to share um also once you've seen once you've seen purity this is going to really help you by the way um discern from what's what's not god what's not pure once you see the pure once you see purity that's why a lot of people have been deceived because they didn't see real purity like maybe they saw demons cast out before and they that was the most like jesus they've seen because they've never seen demons cast out before and that was like wow this must be it but maybe there wasn't full purity there maybe there wasn't for your full purity in the heart of the one casting out demons. But God in this revival is, is shining a light on his remnant. He's shining a light um, in the places where the remnant was hidden before, in the places before where the pure hearts were scattered and you know scattered all around. Now is the time that God is bringing the pure hearts together, bringing the remnant together. And now God is shining a light and in this revival, in this end time revival, he's shining the light. This is me. This is pure. And it's going to be easier than ever for this to be true, where it says they will not get very far. Their folly will be clear to everyone because it's revival, because God is showing himself like never before and bringing and shining the light like this is me this is my heart this is what's good this is what's pure um when you see remember what you've seen 
And so then if you look over here and you see a form of godliness, you'll be able to discern, oh, this is a form of godliness, but not the, the real purity. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to, I'm going to pray for all of you in just a little bit. Um, but before I do, there, I'm going to pray for all of you who've been hurt, who've, who've been abused, and God's going to remove all that pain. But before I do, I want to just open up, open up the time right now for questions, like pertaining to this topic. I want, um, to answer if you have questions, you can begin to write in the comments. I'm going to be looking right now just for the sake of, um, I don't have tons of screens, so I can't look at every platform right now. So I'm going to look on the YouTube, the YouTube, um, and the Instagram right now. So if you have a question pertaining to this, what I've been speaking on, you can write right now in the comments. Okay, so I want to ask a question right now, and I actually was going to teach on this after the Q&A, so I'm just going to kind of go into this right now. This person says, where's the question? I got to see if I can find it. Um, oh, how do you know that you have truly forgiven others and God has seen your heart? Before I pray for you, we're going to forgive people. We're going to forgive people because we're called to forgive everybody, everybody that's, that hurt us, no matter what they've done, because Jesus has forgiven us and we do not deserve to be forgiven, but he's forgiven us no matter what we've done. He's forgiven us of every mistake we've ever made. He's forgiven us of every sin, past, present, future. He's forgiven us completely. He's wiped away all of our mistakes. And so it says in the Bible that just as Jesus has forgiven you, forgive others. In Luke 17, 4, even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks forgiveness, you must forgive. You still must forgive. It sounds like, it sounds like, wow, how to do that? Well, I'll tell you that with Christ, all things are possible with God. All things are possible with God. And so how to forgive is really only something that God can help you with. You, without God, you can't forgive. So God is gonna help you forgive. You have to first be make the decision. You know, a few weeks ago on Sunday, if you haven't seen the message, you'll have to go look at it after, after um, this live at some point. Um, it's called How to Be More Spiritual. But uh, what I taught a few Sundays ago is very foundational. Uh, like, it's just such a big part of how to be more like Jesus and how to do the things that are really hard that we felt stuck in. It, this is foundational, my teaching, how to be spiritual, which let me just summarize it to you right now, is that the real you is a spirit. The real you is a spirit. That's what became born again. That's what goes to heaven, lives eternally. That's what Jesus, what God looks at and says, you're pure, you're in my image. Um, like he's not looking at the soul when he's saying that he's looking at the your spirit, which is the real you. And then you also have a soul, which is your mind and your will and your emotions. And then you also live in a physical body. But the thing is, is that we're called to follow the Holy Spirit and we're called to have the spirit, our spirit, be the leader of this whole body following the Holy Spirit but meaning like our soul has to submit to the spirit and our body has to submit to our spirit. So when you're not having that intention, you're just going with your feelings and you're staying in this place of stagnancy and you're staying stuck. And you can, when it comes to forgiveness, you can think that you've never forgiven somebody when you're just being led by your emotions because you never feel like forgiving them. But I, what I mentioned is so foundational because so much of our the things that we struggle with is because we're not being spiritual about it, we're being led by our feelings. You're not gonna probably feel like forgiving someone <laughs> to, when you forgive them, but that's okay because your feelings are not the truth. 
it doesn't matter what you're feeling. It's not the truth. So much of your feelings are actually influenced by the devil, the, where the devil is trying to speak to you. That's not the truth. We're in a spiritual war. Just because the devil's attacking us in a war, in a war doesn't make us a bad person. And that's what people think. They, they hear all these lies and they think it's me. It's not you. You're in a war. The devil's sending these thoughts. It's not your thoughts. So the real you is the spirit. The real you just wants God's will in every way. The real you just wants to be like God completely. That's the real you. So what to be spiritual is to surrender and be like, no matter that I don't feel like being like God in this situation and following his will, I've made the choice. I have surrendered to God. I've made the choice that I want to be exactly in his will and do all he wants me to do. So therefore, this soul has to submit to the spirit, which wants the, what the Holy Spirit wants. So the, the real you, so the real you, you want to forgive. The real, you don't feel in your emotions, I want to, I don't want to forgive this person, but you know, okay, God's calling me to forgive. So I have to do what God has told me to do. I don't feel like it, but God has told me to do this and I want to, to follow him in every instruction he gives me. That's the spirit. You see, this is like what it's like. The spirit is like, I want to do this. Feelings, I don't want to make him. But the spirit, I want to follow God's will. And so, so many times you think it's this like wrestle and because the emotions are so loud, you think that they're winning. But no, you can make the choice to have them submit, okay, to the spirit that's saying, I want to follow God. So that's all it is. That's all it is. That's all it is. So it'll start with this. Like the moment someone wrongs you, you know, even when it just happens, even if it's fresh, you don't have to wait for weeks to be like, okay, I think I'm ready to maybe forgive now. <laughs> like as soon as they hurt you, you can forgive them right away. You probably won't be feeling it warm and fuzzy. Oh, I forgive. <laughs> but you can still forgive your soul doesn't have to lead okay so to for you know god counts real forgiveness as you saying out loud i forgive this person because your words have life and death so these the words that you speak are what's powerful and what's truth so i forgive this person and you can you know, you can pray to God and say, Lord, help me to see this person as you see them. You know, help me to not have negative thoughts towards them. Help me to not want um, harm to come their way. Give me your eyes for them. Give me your heart for them, Lord. And then you can say out loud, I bless them. And I don't want them to reap because God is a God of justice, okay? God is a God of justice, and so what these people sow, they will reap. But we need to have the heart that they can be restored. We need to have the heart that their eyes will open up, they will repent, they will ask God for forgiveness, and God's mercy and forgiveness will come upon them. And that even if there are some repercussions, like David had the repercussion of the baby dying because he cheated, you know, but... God restored him like, you know, he still could live a life of peace and joy and walk in God's purpose for his life. Like we should have that heart for, we, we should have that heart for people. That's the heart we should have. And you're probably not going to automatically feel that way when people hurt you, but that's okay. What's important is that you're not speaking words of death over them. You're not speaking, I just hope they reap. That hurt they caused me, I just hope, you know, don't speak words like that. Be quiet and choose to only speak life and blessing over them and say, I forgive them. And um, that's forgiving. God counts that as forgiving. And then, you know, I found, because I've gone through, especially last year, I've, you know, I've gone through, I've gone through such, you know, hurt from people, right? And people in the church. But I found that um, as time goes by, it's it's good to keep on saying, I forgive that person, you know, when that person still doesn't apologize, when that person still causes to do harm, when that person caused harm and then didn't 
clean up the mess, but that mess has remained for a long time, you know, you still need to keep forgiving that person to not allow the devil to creep in with any kind of bitterness. So like keep saying, I forgive this person. And um, what you need to do to help you stay in that place of forgiveness and not open up a door of bitterness or anything, an offense, what you need to do is um, take your eyes off of that person, like on social media or something, right? So, cause many times when someone hurts you, you're like checking up, people tend to check up on them. What has happened in their life? Have they reaped bad things yet? <laughs> you know, um, don't do that. You know, unfollow the person. Don't put your eyes there. Keep your eyes focused on what God has called you to do. Um, because when you're looking at that person, this is where the devil speaks to you, tries to speak hate to you. And so what we want is we want to become more like Jesus. We want our soul and our body to really be in line with the spirit to because that that's how to become transformed to the image of god where your soul isn't so strongly the devil's influence is there right but you've made the soul and body submit so many times that they that they've become transformed the soul has become transformed where the devil doesn't have easy access to speak such hate and the devil's will so much, but resist the devil and he'll flee. You've resisted the devil so much saying, nah, -uh. what's going on? The soul here cannot win. You must be submitted to the spirit. Um, so it's a spiritual principle of resist the devil and he'll flee. So because you've been a warrior and been continually uh, obeying God, you go to the next level and the devil doesn't get to come in these areas anymore. So strong. And so like over time you find your heart is just more naturally loving and more naturally feeling even forgiveness for people. You'll find that's what you want um, because now you're in a place of shining so brightly for Jesus. Like it's the difference of this, right? It's the difference of this. It's the difference of, so like, let's say it was a minister. So like, let's say me, let's say if I was in a place where my soul hadn't been transformed so much, I could be like going through spiritual attacks, you know, people being mean to me or something. And like the soul is like, ah, you know, the devil's just attacking so much in the soul. And then I have to go and minister, I have to go and preach. And I can do it I, and I can speak and I can speak God's word. But there, it, it might not be like shining as brightly, full of God's love and peace and joy, you know, as if when my soul has been transformed so that when I'm going through that attack, people are being too mean to me. I'm not, you know, my, I don't have the feelings of like hate and uh, that I have to suppress, but it's not affecting me. You know, it's not nat naturally just, oh, I love my enemies. It's okay. Like, it's okay. Bless them. Instead of, how could they do this to me? Da, da, da. But just, oh, that's just life. I bless them. I hope their eyes are open. I don't want them to reap bad things. I bless them. And then full of, you know, and then I come to preach and God's amazing, you guys, like full of joy, you know? So that's the difference. That's the difference. So it's like, you know, when you're in that beginning process, when your soul, the devil's able to work so strongly, you, you do not need to be ashamed. Um, you can still be in God's will all the time, you know, constantly making your soul submit. But as you become transformed, you do shine brighter for God. You do become more like him. He's able to put more anointing in you. That's, that's the difference. So um, this person asked the question, how do we know we've really forgiven and God has seen our heart? You know, God counts it as forgiveness when you speak those words, I have forgiven this person. And when your actions back it up by not dwelling on it, because when you go on their social media or something, or you're just spending your time thinking about them and thinking what they've done to you, you are opening up a door to the devil for him to speak like hate towards the person. So that's counteracting the words you spoke of forgiveness. So you speak the words of forgiveness and you don't speak words of death, but then your actions need to um, match up 
So just don't dwell on the person. Just leave it in the past. Don't dwell on the past and just focus on God and what he's called you to do. And that's what God counts as forgiveness. Amen. Okay, I'm going to look at maybe one more question, answer one more question here. Should we avoid those who keep hurting and disturbing our peace after we forgive, after we forgave themselves? Well, this scripture that I just read to you about, it says people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. So it doesn't say don't love these people. We're called to love every single person, but don't have anything to do with them, meaning you are not called to bring in everybody close. You are not called to bring in every Christian close. You are called only to bring those close in whom are surrendered to God, whom God has shown to you. They are pure. They have pure heart. And this is someone I want you to bring in close for an iron sharpening iron, or in some cases for you to pour into them, them to pour into you, um, to, to, to grow closer to God together, um, to help one another, encourage one another. But it's not supposed to be many people, and it's definitely not supposed to be these people have nothing to do with them, it says. So when God has revealed to you that someone is just having these bad motives and they're staying in that place and they aren't surrendered to God, don't have anything to do with them. Pray for them, bless them from a distance, love them from a distance. But if you are allowing them access in your life, you're literally opening up a door to the devil. You're opening up a door of deceit. Where the devil will try, where, where the devil will use them to deceive you and um, try to try to deceive you and confuse you and pull you away from from the pure place where God wants you to be and from Jesus. Amen. What if they are family? Well, if you like live with them and you're not able to, if you're in a situation you can't not live with them, then just put up the boundaries that you're able to and you'll have God's protection but it's not temp it's just temporary God doesn't want does not want you to stay in a place living wise with people like that people who are um impure in that in their heart all right I'm going to pray right now for all of you it's time to be healed and be freed from any way that people have hurt you from people from how people have hurt you in the church and in relationships, God is healing you and freeing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. I break every curse sent upon you, every curse of witchcraft, every curse, every spell, every like manipulate, every manipulative curse and spell to try to make you stay close to someone who is ungodly. I break all of those curses now in Jesus' name off of you. Every curse of witchcraft now. Every curse of deceit in Jesus' name. And I declare every spirit that came in through abuse, that came in through physical abuse, psychological abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, I declare it must come out now in Jesus' name. I see some... I see women here who've been hurt by people whom they trusted, by people in the church, um, by like physically even um, being lusted after and saying inappropriate things. I declare all of that demonic hurt that came through that must come out of you now in Jesus' name. I declare all of the grudges and all of the bitterness towards God that people have in their that you have in your heart right now must come out now in Jesus name. 
I declare every spirit of distrust towards God, distrust towards God's true servants. I declare all must come out now in Jesus' name. Every scheme of the devil of trying to keep you from being childlike and humble and pure, I declare it must come out now in Jesus' name. This, this, uh, the memories that you have, the memories of how someone hurt you, abused you, that stayed with you, these memories that have stayed with you, I declare they must come out now and I declare they cannot come back to the forefront of your mind. Like you can't, they can't just come in your mind anymore. And I declare that they cannot come in your dreams anymore in Jesus' name. And there's someone who's just, rem I just see someone right now being reminded of this certain person that hurt them, who abused them. They reminded them of a lot, like someone kind of, that they know kind of looks like them. And they're just, there's something that, that that's like the enemy's put to try to keep the memory fresh. And I declare that out now in Jesus name, you cannot be reminded anymore. It's in the past, it is gone in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I declare now all of the impurities that, that people put upon you in relationships, that people um, even spoke to you like wrong doctrine. I see there's some people who had wrong doctrine put in, like they, like you were pure. This is in terms of even like sexual things and everything, but I, I'm seeing specifically sexual things too. Like you were pure, but then there's a person you looked up, up to, like a man of God, who tried to justify to you and say that it was okay to do these things. Um, they, it was like a spiritual abuse, like because it was like a power thing, like because they knew you looked up to them, they would just be like, God told me this, God told me this, God told me this, this manipulation, this wrong doctrine put in you. And I remember and you even that moment where like, this doesn't seem right, but you just believed them. And so even it made you confused, like what is the truth? Um, and just in this place of confusing in terms of doctrine and, and, and even I see there's some of you that felt like you, do I even hear God? Just this place of confusion because of this corruption, I declare all of that to come out now in Jesus name, all of that corruption and indoctrination, the impure doctrination that came to you by someone who made themselves look so high spiritually. I remove that out now in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I see right now God's freeing people also of I see a certain as a spiritual manipulation tactic where someone, instead of just, instead of being real and pure, there is someone, leaders being like acting, sounding so spiritually advanced in a manipulation way and talking about uh, just the, you know, God showed me this, I went to heaven and I saw this and just these deep things and I see this scheme of the devil it's like a hook God God's taking this out of many people right now like a spiritual hook sent to you uh, trying to entice you with deep uh, spiritual things that were impure motives I declare this hook to be loosed from you now in Jesus name and every tie, like witchcraft, manipulation that was sent to you, tie to pull you, to interest you, to listen to these teachings that had impure motives. I cut all of those ties now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I declare every scheme of the devil. I see this scheme of the devil now of like certain leaders had the motives to have... Um, you know, tons of followers. And so there was specific manipulation done. Um, 
in the spiritual realm to bring confusion so that you couldn't see. I declare all of that to come out now and I cut all those ties, all of those demonic ties like sent to you, sent to you through social media, sent to you through teachings. I cut all those demonic ties off of you now in Jesus' name. And I speak this anointing now to come upon you and touch your eyes now in Jesus' name. I declare you to see in the spirit clearly that your spiritual eyes would open, the, the prophetic anointing would come upon you and that your, you would be prophetic from today. You would see spiritually what's going on. You can discern, you can see purity and you can see impurity. I declare you will not be deceived from today, but you will see clearly in the spirit and you will stay in the truth you will stay in purity. You will stay in God's will. You will not be distracted. You will not be manipulated. You will not be deceived. You will not be abused. You will not be hurt in Jesus' name. I speak this anointing to cover you and I speak per this anointing to come upon you and protect you. You would be spiritually protected in Jesus' name. When you are planted, when you have you know, in the spiritual realm, you've decided to be planted where God is calling you to be planted. There's a covering that the, 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 the same power of God that's casting out demons, that mighty power of God, that mighty anointing comes upon you as a spiritual covering. And so when people are trying to do manipulation things, it's demonic things to try to pull you away, to try to pull you to them, to try to pull you from God's will. You are protected. They cannot touch you. As long as you don't open up doors, this is why you have to walk in wisdom to stay planted, to stay focused, to not put your eyes here and there. But when you stay focused on where God has called you to be planted, you will be protected in Jesus name from all of those schemes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I declare, all bitterness that you've held towards people, all grudges, everything, offense that you've harbored in your heart, I declare it to be broken now and to come out now. I speak healing over your heart. I speak healing over all of those wounds, over every area of abuse that's happened to you. I speak healing now in Jesus' name. I declare it is in the past and it is gone. You are a new creation now. You are protected. You are pure in Jesus' name. I speak the peace of God to fill you now and the joy of the Lord to fill you in Jesus' name. I declare you to feel God's contentment. Be content so that nothing would keep you from, unfor from forgiving people. But you would be content in God's will. I speak that over you, that you would encounter his love, his peace and joy now to be and stay content and not worry about other people and what they've done and how they're doing, but that you would stay content in your relationship with Jesus and stay focused in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for healing your people. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done today. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing protection, your perfect protection. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.